Rodney was cutting a plastic tree guard off a dead tree and as he pulled it apart to take it off uh, a little ball of uh, apricot fur just rolled out onto the ground and picked it up and said I think we've got a dormouse here. It didn't wake up, it was torpid. We put it back where we'd found it and crept away and uh, thought oh we've got dormice and started to, to find out if it was possible to train to get a license to handle them because by then we'd found out that they were a protected species and if we wanted to handle them we would need a license. The National Dormouse Monitoring Programme will give your site a, a site number. You need a minimum of 50 boxes. We've ended up with 72 boxes and that has been mm -hmm. stable for yeah. several years now. Get them all in bags for them, don't worry about them running and jumping out. In really good conditions they'll breed twice in the year and sometimes they breed very late and mm -hmm. we've had very tiny young dormice in at the beginning of November. Um, apparently to successfully survive hibernation they need to be about 15 grams in weight uh, so that they've got enough fat reserves to make it through hibernation and wake up in the spring. If it's warm enough to wake them up but not warm enough for things to grow, it's, they struggle to find food. In the spring when they wake up they need pollen to provide protein from the flowers uh, on trees. They will eat buds, insects, if they're not capable of successfully digesting the cellulose in leaves. This is a summer nest from a nest box and that's the entrance hole that would have been in the box against the hole at the back of it against the tree trunk and you can feel the round cavity inside. You can tell it's a dormouse nest because they're actually woven. This is used dead grass and honeysuckle bark and then there were green leaves wrapped around the outside. This is a hibernation nest that they hibernate in over the winter. With just one animal inside, stuck together with saliva as well. So it's quite, I uh, don't know whether you want to feel it, it's quite rigid. They hibernate on the ground because it maintains a more even temperature throughout the winter and they need the humidity so that they don't dry out while they're hibernating. Pregnant female. Just a case of gently trying to persuade them to come up without destroying the nest at all. Well, she'll be pregnant for about a month and it takes about 10 weeks for the young to become independent the adults that will be slightly more apricot coloured um, and their fur is denser. It's only 19 and a half grams. If the female breeds again you, you might find a, what you'd call a teenager I suppose back in the nest as well. They, they, they come and go. I've only been bitten once and that was a, a female with very young babies in the nest uh, and it just bit me as soon as I got my hand into the hole. They're not vicious at all. And they're, they're quite amenable most of the time. Fourteen. We note down the, the sex of the adult juvenile babies. We also note down whether they're active or torpid because sometimes earlier in the year if it's chilly in the morning they're in their nest fast asleep. They do move around to find the food source and they'll obviously move to find the, the best hazel trees. Because they're arboreal animals uh, they live up in the trees feet are actually 
shaped specifically so that they can clamber around easily in the trees and grip onto branches. A lively. When they're curled up for sleeping, they wrap their tail across their back and down over their nose, which uh, keeps their nose warm. <laughs> to make sure that their tail has gone right in because their tails are very delicate. Uh, they can break quite easily. In you go. Attach it back to the tree.